I've, like I'll say it on record, I've always told this to my friends. If there was ever a choice between Providence and Ronin, I would do Providence. If there's ever a choice between doing anything and metal, I would pick metal. But, but it also has to be the right kind of band or, or the right kind of heavy metal that I would enjoy playing for me to pursue that. But that gets priority. And that's Shazan Sheikh from Providence. My latest guest on the Trend Crusher podcast. Welcome everyone to a new episode. For all of you listening in from Bombay, you know that this weekend is Scarfest, another edition, and they've got four special bands together Providence, Demonic Resurrection, Bhanak Moth, and Zignema. Both Demonic Resurrection and Providence are playing shows after quite some time. Shezan and I have been bumping into each other at shows over the last few months and each time we say that we'll meet up and record a podcast episode together, well, finally it happened. So here's my chat with Shezan. Okay, this is, I don't know how long in the making, I think, how many months Shezan? Honestly, we've been discussing this and I finally pinned you down now to record this. I don't know. I think it's it's been a while. I think four, five months, six six months maybe. I don't think introductions are needed if you've grown up in Bombay in the what mid two thousands, twenty tens or so, because yeah. you've actually played. And I don't know. Wait, I can't remember. I don't think I saw you in Zohak. I remember you being in Scepter. That was my first kind of encounter with you and. Uh, yeah, then of course, Providence. So, wow, you've really been <laughs> in quite a few bands and been performing for quite some time. Does it really feel like that law? Uh, no, I was. I don't know if you know this, but I was also in Atmosphere for a while. No way. Yeah, I was outside of Bruce, I think, when they decided to form a band, I was the first guitar player to join that band. And for Atmosphere, I was the person who scoped out Mayank from Zignima and recommended it to Atmosphere. And um, I don't think that went down well with Sid in hindsight, <laughs> <laughs> at least at the time. But yeah, uh, Scepter, I don't think I was a full-time member. I, I played one gig mm. and I jammed a few. Um, and I think when it came to, uh, to the point where we started talking about writing the new Scepter album, there was a, I won't say difference of opinion, but there was a difference of direction in what I wanted to write and what they wanted to write. So uh, the Providence ka Watch Them Fall ka first verse riff was actually something that I had done during Scepter. And uh, that's not the direction that they wanted. And and then I just decided, ki, okay, like, you know, you should pursue what you want and I'll figure something else. So then when Providence happened, I was like, listen, I have this riff from quite a few years back. Can we try it? And that's how that ended up in in a Providence song. Okay, wait. I didn't want to get the history lesson yeah. done yet. <laughs> but uh, let's roll back, right? Why are we talking after all this time and stuff? Is in just over a week, uh, I don't know, is this a comeback or what of Providence? We'll find out in this chat. But I think after five years or more, uh, Providence performing at Scarfest 2024. Give me your initial thoughts. Um, I don't know. Like first, let me just address the comeback thing. I don't. I don't think it's a comeback or anything. It's pretty open ended. Um, which basically this ended up happening um, because we just wanted to play. Like it's been a while, and um, if you if you grew up at that time in in the Bombay metal circuit at least and if you had a band or even if you played even one gig around that time it was a very different atmosphere altogether right so um, when when the time came it was a lot of like you know like I sort of miss that part of my life where I could be very unhinged on stage and like you know uh, yell stupid shit like fuck that sound guy or whatever <laughs> and and you know just jump on stage and play some riffs and and go home you know without any pressures of anything and um when when it came to it we we sort of talked it out that uh, let's just keep it open ended you know we'll we'll decide how it feels and how life is placed after scarfest and 
if if everyone feels it that we should do then yeah we we should cut an album and if everyone feels like no man um, i don't think this is something that i want to pursue now because you know you move into different phases of your life so th- then it is what it is and um, let's just try and make the best of what you can for scarfest is where we were at so it's so interesting that you say like if you grew up at the time right because the lineup also of scarfest uh, and shout out to kadadi for putting it together is not only providence you've got zignema you've got uh, demonic resurrection who's again playing uh, after so long and i'm having a brain fart on the fourth band oh bhayanak yeah. moth and i think again what you're talking about and for me i have very fond memories i don't know how fond memories you have of b69 but it was literally like you showed up every other week and there was either zignema performing at one point i used to joke that either it was zignema providence who were like a house band yeah. of sorts right and then you had the wine and beer shop downstairs yeah. you had wasant across the street and that's where basically all of us spent so much of our youth yeah. i feel and then suddenly b69 shut and there was that whole void so this is like literally a throwback to 2012 as it's been saying but okay let's talk and i know you've been at least whenever we bump into each other at gigs been kind of talking about hey wanting to get back so one thing i've noticed at least with the lineup is you've got what i'm calling the og lineup of providence except aaron yeah. on drums and you've got a new drummer raul on this so first of all again i'm guessing everyone is 30 plus so life <laughs> marriage uh, <laughs> partners all of that kind of takes in place what kind of brought you all all together in a room back again and decided and how did like all the pieces kind of fit back in together um I don't know man like the question has like you know um uh, like there's a lot I could say on on just everything that you've asked right now and I'm going to segue in between stories so just like you know hold your attention on that one um how we got together was um I think it was probably a weekend and I got a call from Sunny at some 1 2 a.m in the morning and Friday or Saturday night 2 a.m calls are you know be wary if your best friends are calling you around that time So he just called me and and he was like um like I really want to do this man like where where's your head at So I was like bro like if if you want to do it I'm in but uh, like I would do providence with uh with you know pretty much without pretty much anyone else but I will not do it without Charan because like Charan and I have always shared that synergy between us as you know songwriters for the band itself So so then me Charan and Sunny we met at a bar as metal bands do <laughs> and and we had a few drinks and we and we spoke it out and uh, I think pretty much uh, except for Sunny I think Charan was the most hesitant but I was I was pretty neutral like I'm okay if this goes either way and um, the and that the the reason was exactly this right like you're in a different uh, decade of your life and you have your partners or your kids and uh, you have bills to pay and what not and from what we remembered during the earlier years of providence it was quite an upkeep man <laughs> like like it was pretty hard to afford the band you know like um, and and we were also very serious despite of how we projected ourselves on and off stage and very easy going or like you know um there for the lols or whatever but but we always took the band pretty seriously so so the the band practices would cost a lot of money uh, getting that i think that was one of the biggest uh, savers for us that aaron was a graphic artist so a lot of the merchandise at the time the designs we didn't have to pay for uh but but it was still it was still a thought process behind it that okay this gig is coming up do you want to launch a, a fresh piece of merch and then you have to do the practices again and uh are we going to be able to afford the practices or like you know my guitar sounds like shit like uh i don't have a i don't have good gear or whatever so it was it was constantly something or the other whether it's upgrading your equipment or uh dividing your life between the band and uh constantly worried about what you're going to do in the future if if this doesn't work out for you so today when a lot of those aspects are secure and everyone's in a happier place 
it just seemed a lot more easier to uh, just get up and be like okay karke dekhte hai yaar if it if it works out it does great if it doesn't it's still great because i feel that for the for the time that was put in when we were broke we actually ended up having more fun in the band because as broke as we were we were also really driven to go out and perform and um i wouldn't say upstage but but definitely try and hold our own with you know whether it's a zignema or a bm or a dr and it wasn't animosity or anything but it was like you know those bands are stepping up the game for everyone in the circuit and uh we don't want to be left behind and we should step up what we are doing too and stepping up often requires a lot of time money and effort um i don't think today even if it was a new band or or if providence decides to pursue for the next 3 4 5 years whatever it may be i don't think the the time and effort is something that we have while today we can afford the band financially whether it's jams or or gear or you know even merchandise um i don't think we can afford the time to invest in a band and we've been very clear on one thing that uh, that we are not necessarily chasing what we had before and we are also not looking to build something new what happened in that decade can be left behind because we are very content with what we got out of providence as individuals um so the idea is largely to just go and have fun right like like all of the bands that are playing are also our friends like not just on stage like like we hang out with each other even today uh, you know we share sometimes we share the shit or the grind of the life with each other um we know each other's you know families and what not so when when this came about it was it was like a bit of a no brainer like chalna karte yaar like humne itna saath mein bajaya what's one gig going to change uh, like a new memory for 2024 i guess okay fair and i know you might cringe when i'm saying this so giving you a heads up but while i was actually watching some older videos of providence kind of getting nostalgic and remembering all the stuff like you said i also came across uh, and this is seo friendly that's why where there's a video of you talking about providence going on hiatus yeah i think you remember yeah, that right a bunch of those videos <laughs> so what changed i mean like because if i want to like give you a synopsis one of the things you talked about was a the band stagnating uh also there was no kind of fun in it from what i'm gathering from what you're saying right now a lot of that has kind of got reversed but how do you kind of reflect at that time i mean is there any regret on putting providence on hiatus back then um so i'll tell you what the hiatus was actually my idea aaron and charan were not on board with the plan even karan pote who was the vocalist at the time um kanti was a bit neutral because kanti is kanti is there like you know he's just there you see him or you don't like he's there in spirit or whatever it is but uh, everyone wanted to pursue it and i didn't want to pursue it and i got a lot of shit for it from the band but and and props to them because uh, even though I, they wanted to and i didn't everyone mutually decided to okay let's then fuck it let's not move on with this and um, the I don't think it was stagnation bro because we actually had written an entire album called Embodiment and when we decided that we are not going to proceed further we put the entire album all the demos on SoundCloud for anyone who wants to listen to it and funnily enough like some of those demos have quite a few plays and uh, I occasionally get a shout out like you should rework these songs and release it but um, so I never thought it was stagnation but somewhere during the journey of providence both charan and i slowly started becoming serious about be- becoming full time musicians instead of uh, you know being guitar players for a metal band we started feeling that uh, i don't think i have it in me to go and get a job and i have to pursue music full time and and i think that feeling was mutual with charan also and it came to a point that you know if if we keep putting in the time and effort in providence through and through uh the 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 legitimate grinding years of our life we would actually uh, the regret would have been that when we were younger why didn't we do this sooner you know so there's there's no regret as such of shutting down the band um the 
in fact not shutting down the band would have left us with bigger regrets um because if that didn't happen um there was a empty vacuum at least for me where i realized that okay now the band is shut and i'm not making any music but i want to be a full time musician and how do i you know figure this shit out that actually led me uh to take some active steps and decisions which helped me become a full time musician it has helped charan also who's you, you know he's doing really well right now if you if you just look into what he's up to lately as a as a independent singer songwriter and what not and and I, that's a, that's another thing about charan though right like people think that how can uh this dude with long hair head banging on stage go and play hindi indie pop music and i don't think a lot of people know this but charan was always that guy you know in the band charan while we'd be writing stuff like talk shit get hit charan would always come and demo his hindi singer songwriter songs and i remember the first song he played for us was called lapata and when he played lapata aaron and i couldn't digest it like we uh we we couldn't stop laughing you know and it was not a it wasn't like a discouraging thing and for what is worth charan also took it sportingly but it was like तू टॉक शिट गेट हिट सब बजा के तू लापता सब क्यों कर रहा है यार विद लाइक यू नो जी डी सी ई माइनर लाइक द फक्स गोइंग ऑन एंड ही वॉज ऑलवेज इन टू इट एंड ही रियली वॉन्टेड टू परस्यू इट एंड इफ आई थिंक इफ द इफ प्रोविडेंस एग्जिस्टेड मोर देन इट शुड हैव आई थिंक वीड बी डूइंग नाइन टू फाइव जॉब सो ऑनेस्टली देर इज नो रिग्रेट बट बट द बैंड taught us a lot about becoming full time musicians like when we entered the field professionally we already had so much understanding as and as people who were self taught in production right like we would get more inputs from people who were recording us or like the guys from scribe or zignima like we would go and check out their guitar tone so we would hey how do you do this and then you know we learned a lot about compressions and reverbs like on the job so when we actually moved into the professional world like a lot of our basics were very clear without a formal education and it it actually helped us you know it gave us a head start in what we wanted to pursue wow that's so interesting because i never realized that charan back then was uh, also pursuing the entire <laughs> indie and especially hindi rock or indie pop okay you know at this point i'm also going to say one of the things i feel is that and i feel this with a lot of bands that i think in the mid 2000s all the way till i think even 2014 15 who released stuff is this is way before spotify streaming and all of that came in right so the only place providence songs are available is soundcloud and as of last night i discovered also reverb nation so yeah i i know so <laughs> okay <Reverb> so <laughs> so okay so fair enough sorry but whoever is going to listen and now suddenly you will get all these notifications on so, there yeah. also <laughs> but i'm very curious about one song uh that's why i want to talk and i think there's enough ink spilt on vanguard you guys i mean i don't want to get into the history about winning rolling stone metal awards and all of that stuff there's enough on there but i couldn't find much about dante so i want to play dante but tell me a bit about that track who's on the track was that like the transition from vanguard to embodiment what was dante about tell me Dude so speaking of regrets Dante is a huge regret <laughs> I'll tell you why because um, when the Scarfest I'll I'll answer the question but I want to tell you why uh, I feel Dante is a regret and so does Charan his exact words when we were jamming for Scarfest he and I shit you not I'm quoting him hum chutiye humne ye kyu likha hai and he was like bro radio edit ye mere ko nahi bajane ka you know I don't want to play this song and uh, we eventually ended up cancelling Dante from the set uh at the time when dante happened was um, i can't remember who i i really can't i would have named otherwise but i really can't remember who said this but charan and i was sitting outside the jam room and we were hanging out and and a lot of bands would just come and hang out at noc the first yeah. one right so someone said i really like your songs but you know like i find the riffs are too easy to play so charan and i were we we did not uh the compliment that he likes the song did not filter through the only thing that got through our brains was did he just say that and uh and dante was a product of that like we uh 
by the time Vanguard was done, we had also grown up as, you know, uh, metal guitar players, like skill set had built up and um, just overall songwriting had gone up. So, so it was a very uh, whiskey-fueled, driven song that was like, riffs like they bro, like fuck this, you know, like the jumpy shit is great, but let's just, uh, let's just try and uh, blend, like, and Providence has always been like a genre blend of a lot of elements, right? So it was like, let's just try and blend uh, death metal with what the vanguard sound is. So, so Dante had a lot more technical riffs and it had, a, it had more faster paced grooves and it, it was almost progressive if I can. Like it had, uh, we decided that we won't do the traditional verse chorus, verse chorus and Dante is just big riffs after big riffs and hooks after hooks. And at the end we were like, you know, we ended Dante in a very different way, but we were like, you know, uh, we write big outros. Hmm and it's missing in Dante. So let's just try and write a big melodic outro. And that's how Dante happened. And it's just six minutes of that expression of riffs after riffs after riffs. Who's on uh, uh, On Dante, we had uh, Vivek Bhatt. Uh, yeah, and Providence, had, we went through a lot of vocalists, man. <laughs> like, uh, Karan was there, then Vivek came, then Vivek left, then Karan came again, so. And now back to Sunny. And that's actually interesting about Dante. That's why I asked you, right? Because I, I know uh, Karan from, of course, Abraxas. Uh, and yeah, that sound uh, entirely. And before that, he was with Noiseware also. So the, he was kind of the voice of that. So I remember him there. And I still remember him also joining Providence and how that kind of fit in. But yeah, so... Okay, so I think that's a great segue into the song you will not hear at Scarfest. <laughs> Here is Dante.
and that was Dante and it's by a band called Providence I'm sitting here with Shazan you know I've always wondered this and I'm very curious to know how you kind of look back right and of course we're all in our late or mid 30s also a lot of I think Providence material at that time and I think it was also a product of us being in our 20s and I think that's why it also resonated was very like how do I say machoistic bro like but again when now we're talking and for everyone who's kind of listening to you there's a huge evolution of sorts right how do you kind of look back at that material I mean like literally you added song title or you'll have a song title talk shit get hit right and I don't think it gets more on the nose in that how do you kind of reflect or think about that um so I like I'm sure people know this in general but I don't know if Charan and like I can't speak on this for Charan and Kanti to be honest but I might come as a shock because I'm including Aaron in this Sunny me and uh, Aaron we've all been always been very angry people yeah. despite of just laughing around and what not but when we would sit and talk about life and you know the the ongoings of the world in general we realized that we are pretty much on page with everything and we have a lot of angst and i think charan also had that angst but his expression was a little more different like aaron me and sunny had a pretty direct expression about those things and and charan had a, a very different way of expressing that anger because uh, he was on board with the music and he resonated and he felt it but the three of us were more in your face about it like I don't like this, I don't like that, fuck this, fuck that. And there was no, it was just black and white. There was no grey in between. And I think for Charan and Kanti, there was a bit of grey in between. But for Sunny, me and Aaron, it was just either left or right. And um, the, the thing with uh, Providence was like, you know, you're saying the whole bro-ness and whatnot. I don't think it's the right thing to say in 2024, but uh, Providence uh, was, a, was a boy thing. Yeah. It was it was a guy thing. It was our thing. You know, it was never like women are not included. But but Providence was a bad boy club for people who vibed with that stuff. There were a lot of people who did not like the band either, you know. But there were a lot of people who um, emotionally and the energy at the gigs and, you know, just the conversations that they would have with the band guys resonated and agreed with. So it was very clear that we are doing what is our little boys club and we are playing the music and anyone is, you know, free to access it, listen to it and come for our gigs. But we are not shifting uh, who we are or what we want to make so that we can get access to, to you know, more people. And, uh, that, and, and you know, this is, this is something that I've always maintained and I will not shy away from saying this. You know, Providence, at the time, 2010, had t-shirt prints and poster prints that said Ford the Eli Buntai. And there were a lot of people in the metal circuit who would have a good laugh about it. Ki uh, Buntai bands, Nechaye and this and that, right? That, funnily enough, has been the evolution of the music scene in general for the last 8 to 10 years. And the very same people who would give a shit about it were the ones who accepted the hip-hop culture of the Buntai and the Aiba and, you know, the lingo and the style and whatnot. And uh, there was a time uh, when, you know, uh, at the time, Emiwe was very unknown. And we had heard his song, uh, Or One Tai Kya Bolte, and we used that as an intro tape. When Providence was stepping on stage, we played that track as an intro tape. Then uh, we played this gig called Urban Assault. And at the time, Nazi was just getting eyeballs. And Providence and Nazi had done uh, a collaboration at the time at that gig. And uh, and you were there, right? So uh, when we were doing it, a lot of people were like, what the fuck is going on? And despite of knowing our audience, we were always like, you know, we vibe with these people. And if we want to share music, we are sharing it because we vibe. And today the world has sort of accepted that, right? Like I see a bunch of people who try to, this is how you speak in Bombay videos, right? Like RLI, JRLI. And the, uh, the language itself has so many posers who have no idea where the culture comes from or, or what it is from. And props to the hip-hop guys because the guys who actually spread that were the guys who lived that life. No, no, it, it's true. I mean, I get what you're saying, right? And I, I still remember that Nazi gig 
because I was like, hey, who the fuck is this and what's he doing uh, during a Providence set? Uh, but now look where Nezi is yeah. <laughs> uh, and look where all of us are. But I also want to give a shout out because I actually was looking up this track and this is again available only on SoundCloud and strangely enough, I found a video for it, which I totally forgot about, is where Providence and Swadeshi uh, did a track together. Uh, I'm forgetting the name, Kalyug. Yeah. Uh, which, if you think about it, fit so seamlessly, right? Like, it didn't feel like this was, I don't know. I mean, and I mean, forgive me for using the uh, analogy, but it felt like new metal, right? It was rap and, you know, metal all together. Here you had like your thrashy riffs with again the flow of uh, Swadeshi uh, on Kalyug. And this is again the video, this was done by the guys at... 4x4, four four, shout out to Nikhil and Himanshu, right? Again, OGs, they've been around for so long, right? Uh, moving on, and I'm very curious because you already brought it up and since the demos still exist on SoundCloud, whatever did you all do with embodiment and why did you all never put it out? So before I, uh, you know, hit the embodiment thing, I want to, uh, you know, give a shout out to Dharmesh from Swadesi, he, um, who passed away a couple of years ago and he was a very dear friend of mine. We kept in touch outside of the gigs as well. We would, if you would bump into each other and whatnot. The, uh, before the embodiment thing, the reason for Kali Yug was, I think Nikhil actually engineered this. Uh, he was looking into Swadesi and he already knew us from the circuit way back when. And when he came across Swadesi, he realized that Swadesi and Providence as people would get along very well. Um, so he called me and he said like, listen, do you want to do this? And I think you guys should just meet. So, so we started hanging out. I called Charan and I was like, Dek, aisa aisa hai. like, should we try it? Should we meet? Let's see. And, and pretty much everyone was game. So we met, we hung out at the old studio spot and, uh, and it was great, man. Like they were, they were introducing us to a lot of their music. We were playing them our music and, and I was like, Ki hum kaise karenge? what are we going to make? And, uh, and, and a lot of it was like. Uh, uh, you know, Limb Biscuit or whatever, like that's that's like kind of the benchmark for metal and, and rap or hip hop coming together. And uh, we were like, keep body count, chesa kuch try karte. You know, it was like slow, groovy riffs and whatnot. And then funnily enough, over the course of time, the inspiration for Kali Yu to writing at least the guitar parts was, was PDB. No way. Yeah, so, uh, so we were like, yeah, like, why don't we let the guitars have breathing room so that those guys can rap better and uh, I really like PDV and so does Charan and everyone in the band so we, so we were listening to a bunch of PDV stuff we were like we should try something like this but do a little bit of our spin on it on how we would end up writing a song like this and Kali Yug was the one that was released but at the gig we actually played four songs and uh, I think one of the songs was was called Dai Kilo Ka Haat and whatnot. And and yeah, it was just it was just a big troll gig for us. And it it ended up coming out really well. Like and Nikhil shot the video also, so that video is there. And Kali Yug, you can actually listen to it on um, on pretty much every streaming platform. I think I think they have it online. And also the thing at the time when we were doing uh, the the property was called the Clash, and it had. Uh, different artists from different genres coming together and making music, right? So there was the Bangalore side of it, there was Delhi and uh, I think there was Kolkata and there was like definitely Bombay. And uh, we just, you know, asked who's doing what and we, we, at the time as metal boys, we were not concerned about any other form of music that's happening. Like if it's not metal, do not care. So we started looking up and we, we did a little bit of a research on what everyone's making and like, what their songs were and what could be the potential outcome. And uh, for us, it was pretty clear, like, you know, like, hum Bombay ke ladke hai, and Bombay is a tough city, dude. I don't know about Bangalore or Delhi and I, that is for those guys to decide. But, but we're not, you know, trying to be cool. We are not trying to be uh, something we are not. Uh, for Swadeshi's part, they are also equally angry motherfuckers. Like, as chilled as they are, everyone, like, there were 10 people in that room who held a lot of angst. And Kali Yug was largely a song about the, the, the Kali Yug. 
and how everything is corrupt and how everyone's fucked and how everyone's just you know shitting on each other to make a dime or whatever and then when the clash came out we ended up listening to every other song and we were actually very proud of it that we we said what we felt which which uh, which i think the mainstream does not give enough credit to metal acts for saying it as is and a lot of people uh, are talking about you know how fun and how rosy the world is and it's actually not and it's only the metal bands who are screaming and i don't know maybe 15 years from now people will say like we've been saying this for 40 years you know what i'm saying as for embodiment man like i said earlier embodiment the demos are online on soundcloud if anyone wants to go and check them out we were going to start the pre production for that album and then we decided to call it quits and then uh, charan and i were sitting around and we were like fuck there's like good eight songs over there bro what do you want to do and he's like i don't know bro and i was like man i can't complete this like this is it uh, but they are to be honest they are full songs like they are three to four minute straight up balls to the walls heavy metal stuff and and we were like fuck it let's just put it out on soundcloud let's just put it up as our status updates on facebook or whatever and whoever wants to hear it hear it and every now and then i check the providence soundcloud page and and it's it, the counters are going up and you know people are still listening to those demos uh, for embodiment there's a song called i want dsp <laughs> yeah. which uh, uh, uh basically i think charan had an appendix operation and uh, he was bedridden for a while and he had nothing to do so it's like i want to write an angry song and i was like listen man you know i the one thing i really admire about holy wars is that there there are no vocals for the first one and a half minute and i do not want to give karan that much time can we just write this long fucking huge intro before we go into the verse riff and so we decided for i want dsp it would just be like a one and a half minute assault fest on the riffs and uh, then maybe if we feel like it we could let karan have some verses and what not but uh, but none of that went through and and the you know the al- the album i'd say like the demos of the album is out there for anyone who wants to check it out wow so if you heard the demos then that's it uh, <laughs> no, nothing else uh, coming on that front one second i know i had a couple of okay now before we get back into providence i want to segue a little bit away into what you've been up to right and uh, of course i've been aware of what you've been doing you started putting out music uh, as a solo act which is more under the i don't know i'm just going to call it synth wave i'm not going to get into yeah, all the that's what it is i don't want to go there, there is whole vapor wave and yeah, all of that synth wave, synth wave yeah. right and uh, i think when the ep dropped uh, anurag tagar shout out to him again was he specifically messaged me saying if you haven't already heard it please do check it out and i think he wrote about it also but uh, yeah it's been a while since again we've heard stuff from ronin and i'm sure if i put this up that people are going to ask hey why didn't you ask a question yeah. about ronin so what's the status update on that if you can tell us um so uh, i'm definitely going to use this as a plug for ronin because i don't speak about it much and ronin any info or anything related to ronin largely exists on my instagram and depending on how i feel on the day i share what i feel like sharing <laughs> but um it's it's one of those things right like af- after providence uh, came to a halt i started pursuing a uh, career as a full time musician uh, but i was I always I don't know man like as a guitar player of a metal band and a very aggressive in your face metal band I felt that I couldn't be a guitar player for for someone I don't know if that makes sense I find it I find it a uh, a matter of pride to be a guitar player of a band like a band entity not not as you know um Shazan and the orchestra you know what I'm saying like I I want to be Uh, Shazan from Providence or or a metal band and um I there was I was always making music but there was there was nothing that really made me feel like I want to pursue music till um, till synthwave happened 
and and synth wave also man like in general it's the music of the 80s right like which is something that i've grown up on like you know vangelis blade runner all of these guys um it has the essence of the movies that we like like say terminator or or rambo uh, even rocky on some level uh, back to the future um fifth element like like a bunch of those movies and and they had those soundtracks it it also had the it also had the video game appeal to it and they were more uh, you know like you could sit in a car and drive across the city and enjoy your night out listening to that kind of music and it it held a lot of the things that i personally love as a pop culture enthusiast so 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 when i started doing synthwave and i i actually dropped the album without giving a singular fuck like i just put it out there i there was no pr there was no uh, media attention i just fuck it like i want to release some music and i dropped it and i i'll never forget the day i actually released that album because it got amazing reviews um bobin james shout out to him uh, who's also to be fair has also been uh you know he's really enjoyed providence uh, throughout our uh, uh tenure as a metal band he gave me the apple artist spotlight of the month and uh, ronin that album is called kyoto inferno it went to it reached number 1 on the electronic charts and for me it was a first like i've never had something that you know reached a number 1 as a independent artist and for and there was no like i said there was no pr there was no media attention to it it was just a cold drop like fuck it sunne gaye to sun you know that that's how it came out and i shit you not bro to this day my apple music counter is going up like to this day people are listening to that album like like it was released yesterday and um the i think it it gave me a uh, much needed confidence that i can do something outside of heavy metal and lately like the new album which you're asking about right like i know and a lot of people ask me this also like i think people are sick and tired of all the promos i've been putting out like coming soon i remember 2023 end i was putting out promos that album coming in 2024 in 2024 where i i i still looped those promos and i was like man fuck this up to 2025 kar nahi sakta kyunki nahi aane wala hai so what I, what ended up happening bro was the album is called bombay vice and the album actually is ready like it is done complete i just have to get the artwork and the mix done and suddenly out of nowhere providence popped up and i like i'll say it on record i've always told this to my friends if there was ever a choice between providence and ronin i would do providence if there is ever a choice between doing anything and metal i would pick metal but but it also has to be the right kind of band or or the right kind of heavy metal that i would enjoy playing for me to pursue that but that gets priority so when providence happened i i felt fairly relieved that okay fuck like i know these guys and i know what we are going to write i know how the jams are going to go and like i don't have to stress about doing everything on my own so so the ronin album is not on the back burner at the moment but it's it's just kept aside for a few months like i'll look into it after scarfest is done but i'm hoping to put it out by march or april and uh, i'm like i also have my own career based projects like for which i'm making music and the deadlines and the time split is not giving me the freedom that i need to put that out and i have no interest in putting out a half assed album like i've had a lot of people who've come up to me and said you could release a single a month or you could do a three track ep uh, but for me because i've grown up on on you know the culture that we vibe with like i like i don't even have to ask you i'm just going to assume that you're one of those guys who listens to an album in its entirety right like as am i and for synthwave and for metal i feel the audience is still like that despite of what the world is today uh, i think people and I, like just segueing into something very different for a second i think you know the value that music holds in an ind- individual's life it's so fucking ironic how worthless it is to people like uh, you'll read all these fancy quotes like you know dance like nobody's watching you or music heals the soul and all of that bullshit but when it actually comes down to listening to music and valuing that piece of art form 
you like the music industry or people in general give really stupid questions and and i want to say this to anyone who's listening they are not questioning me they are questioning you because the boardrooms are talking that the audience has a very stunted attention span they cannot listen to something for more than a minute or two minutes it does nothing to me it i have zero effect of that right because i am still listening to you know rhyme of the ancient mariner which is like 13 minutes long you know i'm still listening to those interludes i'm still listening to the songs that i've grown up on and albums in its entirety but i think it's a bit of a diss in the boardrooms when some mba motherfuckers going out and saying that oh public ko na 2 minute ke upar ka gana jamta nahi hai aur aur 20 second mein chorus aana hi chahiye so i realized that a i'm not going to compete with those kind of artists and i'm not going to uh, put something out because that is the norm for people to listen to i want my 10 track album out because as an artist for me it is a matter of pride that i was able to write a long format album you know it's the difference between um doing an indie film and doing a theatrical film you know like feature films hold a lot of value because uh, it takes years for someone to put that out like for for ronin or bombay vice it's not it's not an album it's it's the experiences of my life in the last 2 to 3 years and and if someone listens to it i want someone to at least remotely feel what i felt when i was writing uh, that album and since you're here i would before you bounce someone to play you a few songs also hence the delay on that <laughs> no fair enough man appreciate it and i think you know going back i think whether it's ronin whether it's providence i think there is that common commonality of sorts and i feel like when i heard kurto inferno there was that sense of nostalgia this that sense of emotion and i feel for a musician right the fact that you get someone to feel something or you evoke an emotion that's a huge deal so all right everyone there's the long awaited update uh, if you don't hear anything by april <laughs> don't come to my inboxes you know where, where to reach uh, shezan in case you guys have already been doing this but okay i mean before we wrap up right i have to ask and for those who listen to this before scarfest good but if you are listening to this post scarfest then i'm guessing you look up youtube or something if someone shoots some bootleg videos but uh, other than you know a nostalgic trip from 2012 what do you think everyone can expect at scarfest from a providence set you know when when this gig got announced um somebody messaged sunny no so actually nobody messaged sunny i put out a screenshot of it where uh, where rahul who's the new drummer right like and and providence for all its grit and grind is a very nonchalant band like kal dekhenge सेटलिस्ट क्या है कल देखेंगे सेटलिस्ट कह रहे गिग को बहुत टाइम है तब देखेंगे अगला जैम में क्या रहे देखेंगे ना ब्रो लाइक फ्राइडे को जैम है ना वेडनेसडे फिगर करेंगे लाइक दैट इज हाउ प्रोविडेंस फंक्शन ओके सो राहुल सिंह कैप्ट ऑन बैजरिंग द प्रोविडेंस ग्रुप की गाइज वॉट्स द सेटलिस्ट वॉट्स द सेटलिस्ट एंड देन सनी लाइक लॉस्ट ए शिट एंड ही रिप्लाइड वैन गार्ड प्लस इन शाह लाइक वैन गार्ड और वट एवर वील वील फिगर सो आई डोंट थिंक Uh, so we actually had a good uh, discussion about it like we do have two to three new songs that we've written during this time and I'll play you some before you bounce also uh, what it ended up being like you know let's let's not there is no room or there's no need to play new songs i don't think anybody's coming to listen to the new songs they're coming to listen to what they've always vibed with and honestly man after 5 years i want people to know our songs and so that we can have that common energy between us like i want to you know uh, i'm really looking forward to playing watch them fall and i'm i want the audience also to look forward to it and like let's just all be on the same page i don't want to surprise you you don't have to surprise me this is what we are playing um it's it's more of the same but uh, i guess without the pressures of proving a point like when you're young and when you're starting out it's always like oh i have to be good and i have to prove a point and you know that fucking critic better write about how good i performed today as uh, scarfest is like uh, i i have to interject huh. not what critic what that fucker on gigpad or rsj oh, is going to say enough. there you go fair enough. <laughs> fair enough what that random you know hide behind my keyboard warrior has to say <laughs> but yeah fair enough but it's i think at least for 
for providence's part the night is about the people who've supported and enjoyed the band for so long it's about us it is not and i'm going to say this very bluntly man it is not for the guy who's coming to watch providence for the first time you know we are not doing anything special to get you in our corner as a fan uh, we are not pulling off any gimmick we are we are doing genuinely we are doing the bare necessity that is required to promote the gig um it it holds a lot of value for the people like i've i've actually had dms where people have said dude i'm looking i'm looking forward to seeing the band and i'm like bro i appreciate it and he's like no no i appreciate it because we've grown up listening to your music the some of those guys are bros who met at a providence gig right like to this day they are friends and it's just good to hear from that old group that hey we are coming to watch the band and and the feeling is mutual like we have also grown up with you right like my 20s to 30s was with you guys as as much as your college years to getting a job years were with us so the gig is for us it is it has nothing to do uh with any of the other bands and there's no disrespect either they are all my bros and props to siddharth to getting all four of these bands on the same night without any ego clashes or any hassles and what not um like for us it's our night and when i say it's our night we are only getting those 40 minutes bro and 40 45 minutes whatever the time set is that 45 minutes belongs to the people who gave their 10 years to the band and it belongs to us who gave our 10 years to those people i could give four flying fucks if some guy went and wrote i did not enjoy them he can suck my dick because it's not for you it's for the guys who were there who bought our album who bought our t-shirts and uh, you know who uh, Uh, the people who made sure that despite of being a new band at the time the venue was not empty when providence played so it's for them and i would i would really like to keep it that way instead of like you know there's no agenda to this gig bro it's just a nostalgic factor between the people who performed and the people who saw the performances that's about it okay now you're going to hate me but i have to push you for an answer to this and you kind of alluded to it right it's zignema bhanak mot demonic resurrection providence and all of you guys have been gigging all around the same time some of i mean like bands like demonic resurrection and bhanak mot obviously started far earlier you are also well known to lose it at gigs <laughs> get into mosh pits <laughs> jump off stages and things like that i again luckily didn't witness one of those incidents uh if you know you know sorry guys <laughs> but which band are you actually looking forward to losing your shit to cuz it's been a while since you've seen some of them also right um bro so honestly um the losing the shit bit part right like there are a lot of clips and there are a lot of status updates and there are a lot of gig pad flame wars that if someone was to go and look up they would find some really unsavory shit that i've written for other bands and what not you know and and like like today i don't lose my shit as much as i did because i don't i don't know what changed but when sometimes people come and tell me like you remember that time like the only thing i genuinely have to say is dude i i had a wild 20s like um i'm i'm not going to shy away from everything that happened whether it was picking a fight in the mosh pit or abusing someone or you know someone getting in my face or me getting in someone else's face um i i'm very thankful and grateful that as someone who decided to pursue rock and roll in my 10 years i was able to live that life to its full extent whether it's smashing monitors whether it's breaking a guitar i remember people breaking guitars and people would come and school them right like oh you shouldn't be breaking guitars you should donate guitars and i was like dude just suck my dick my money my guitar get the fuck out you know and and it didn't uh, land well with a lot of people and uh, at the time it just seemed like the right thing to do and um, losing my shit at gigs for other bands is also because i'm a fan like i am Uh, before i became or before i joined providence as shazan or before i became the guitar player for providence i was a fan i was in the pit and i was moshing to to all of these bands right like jimmy and me were in the first band together so and mayank and i were in atmosphere so zignima and i have like we've practically grown up uh, sharing demos writing ideas hanging out you know just just growing up as 
friends from different bands, even Devoid. When Providence didn't exist, I was going and, you know, watching their gigs. And, and that goes, like, fuck, Sunny was from Bhayanak Moth, right? So when Sunny agreed to join Providence, like, it was a bit of a fanboy moment between me, Charan, and I was like, oh, fuck, Sunny from BM, you know? And uh, me, Aaron, Charan, Kanti, we would always go to gigs and we would watch these bands. But when we would watch them, there was a lot of admiration and respect for what they were doing. But the mandate was clear. We have to be on equal footing with these bands. We have to make our own name. And I want someone to come and watch as much as they want to watch a Zygnima or a BM, they want to watch a Providence. That is what the mandate was, that we should be on that level. And it has nothing to do with... Um, uh, like Providence for its time when we were performing, we were very chill, bro. Like we never argued about headlining slots. We never argued about uh, poster space or like sound check space. And we were very accommodating because there was a lot of respect for the bands that on whose shoulders we were standing on. Um, I still have this screenshot. I'll, I'll maybe, maybe I will share it before Scarfest. But I have a, I have a DM from Sahil on my Gmail. And I call him out occasionally. At the time, Sahil and I didn't get along uh, because uh, there was uh, this huge shit going on, right? Like old school versus modern metal. And I remember a lot of Bombay bands were getting a lot of crowd following. So a lot of the old school fans were just shitting on the bands. And, and it's funny, like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not answering the question straight, but it's a bit of a nostalgic history lesson, so to speak. At the time, there was Albert Ross and Riju and I were friends. And Bipro and I were also in a band like Bipro. And we were in our first ever band. No, second, uh, which was Zohak. And, and then, then we moved on and then Bipro was in Albatross and Albatross. And I remember Riju used to keep writing shit about modern metal bands. And, and I would keep writing shit about old school metal bands. And I'm a huge old school fan, dude. Like Megadeth is my all time favorite metal band. And... But it was like, fuck you, I want to play modern metal, you know, like, what the fuck is this divide, you know? There was PDV and Scepter, right? Like Scepter fans were like, fuck PDV and PDV fans were Scepter, fa uh, fuck Scepter. And, um, and dude, it was, a, it was a big thing. Like at IROC, when PDV would play, Scepter fans would be standing at the back and then Scepter would come and it was an entire rotation of Scepter fans moving to the front and PDV guys moving back. And God forbid, if you guys are together in a mosh pit, hands are being thrown, right? And, and then to suddenly be in a setting like that, and I'm like, you motherfuckers are my friends. We drink. Okay, we drink and we are chill in person. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but let's do this. So then... DM from Oh, yeah, this DM from Sahil, right? Um, basically, I, I, start out, I sort of like just started calling out people who would, who would pit modern metal bands against uh, old school thrash bands. And, and, and it's very ironic in hindsight, but I'm not going to take it back, that as someone who's making 80s music in 2024, I would often say that 80s is over, you know what I'm saying? Like the thrash era is done, like uh, as much as I love Megadeth, I want to do this. And... And I started calling out other bands from it. And I used to get into a lot of Facebook shit with <laughs> audiences from Bangalore. And I was like, fuck you guys and whatnot. And, uh, and I remember Sahil telling me once, you know, Shazan, I don't have to, you and I don't have to look eye to eye. And we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But I respect your opinion. And I was like, but why the fuck do you respect my opinion? We don't get I get along on many things and I don't have to respect your opinion, bro. Like, like I don't care. I don't care what DR is or what Providence is. The only thing that matters is that you and I can have a beer and laugh about all of these things. Like, it's okay if you disagree. Then eventually, uh, I think there was a gig happening and, and DR and Providence were both in, in, uh, in talks for the gig. And I was very excited. Like, I've, and to this day, bro, like, I've always been a very excitable kid when it comes to metal. Yo, fuck, ye sab bands ke bajane mil rahe. Like for me, that is more important than how much are we getting paid or, or PR kya hai. You know, like I find those things trivial. Like to me, it makes no sense. And Sahil was supposed to uh, play or something. And then the organizer said that uh, Sahil has said no. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, Sahil has said no? Why the fuck would Sahil say no? So I DM'd him, Sahil, man, I was looking forward, like, why the fuck would you say no? 
and i have that i have that screenshot and he was like uh dude i don't like zignema and providence fans and i was like why not and he's like they heckle the fuck out of me and i do not want to play with you guys and i was like bro but like i can't control what people feel about other people right i i love you like i have nothing against you dude and in fact like it's a bit of a bummer that you're saying you don't want to play with us because uh you know because like the fans are heckling you and uh, and then it went into dude you know when we go to bangalore it's not easy either but like what are we going to do not play like are we not going to play with an old school band in a new venue like just i think one of the best answers to that is just suck it up and play and tell them fuck you who's in is in and who's not is not and i don't think the band should be answerable for what its fans do you know what i'm saying uh in the context of heckling someone on stage because i think that's a very big part of the metal culture also because the metal fans are so vocal whether they like you or not they make that fact known you know they are into it and if they don't like you they will let you know that they don't like you and uh to be fair albatross fans did not like providence either you know uh it was a like like it was intimidating to go and play in thane <laughs> to, to be honest it was like a albatross stronghold and i we like a lot of folded arms and providence is used to the venue jumping up with them and then you go to thane and there's like 10 people who are into it and like and i don't know if they were into us or not but it was a very rigid front and and when you play in thane like a lot of the bands that were old school thrash bands were very cold you know but but when you'd come to this side of the town and when when you'd be playing with providence and zignema and devoid even we were always very warm and welcoming and i remember most of the no, those audience really enjoyed their performances also and um i don't know if that's changed i hope it hasn't i think it uh, it pushes a band to do better but i do know this for scarfest i think everybody is just genuinely looking forward to um watching all four of these bands together i don't think there's going to be any of the heckling and what not i think people have grown up the fans have grown up the artists have grown up and nobody's 20 anymore and uh, people realize that this is what we do and we have like you know it's one of those things show must go on and you make peace with your artists aging and your fans aging i think that's that wow that was quite a nostalgic <laughs> trip to kind of uh, end but uh... Yeah, I think it's a great way to also end and leave some more for us to chat. I don't know in a few months. Let's see what happens post uh, Scarfest. But and the Ronin EP, I guess. <laughs> and the Ronin EP, of course. But yeah, definitely looking forward uh, to all of that. Uh, thanks, Shahzad. Really appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for uh, doing this. I just want to tell you, this is my first ever podcast. So, so thanks for doing this and having me over and. Uh, And that's Shahzad Sheikh. Everyone, do follow him on social media to stay updated on what's the latest with Providence as well as Ronin. Before I sign off, I'd like to play a track from another band that's performing at Scarfest, Zignema. They have a new music video out for the track "Grind." It's a tribute of sorts to the city of Bombay. I'll leave the link to the music video in the show notes. Here's "Grind."
That was Grind by Zignema, another band that's going to completely rip the place apart at Scarfest. And one last thing to do before I sign off. As always, hit subscribe on the podcast platform you're listening to. You can also check out these episodes on YouTube if you prefer that. Got a couple more episodes coming out before the end of the year, so stay tuned for that. You can follow me on social media. Just search for Trend Crusher on Instagram or check the link in the show notes. I'll see you all very soon. Cheers.